Okay, in this Let's Play we're going to talk about KV, but before we can talk about KV, let's uh, take the opportunity to talk about how we got into games and how we started to learn how to program and actually make games. So, um, we got into computers when um, we found uh, Space Invaders and Pac-Man in the arcades. Our brother got a ZX81 and put it under the family TV and we started playing around with that. And then in September 82, we were able to buy a Dragon 32, which had 32K of memory and colour. Um, we started writing some games on this. I managed to get a game published in Computer and Video Games just as a type-in listing. Um, and then we were fortunate enough to be able to study computer studies at Trowbridge College, now called Wilkshire College in Trowbridge. Um, I've actually managed to find an old report card uh, dating back to 84 from Godfrey McCann. Uh, this is Philip's report. Should get a grade A without difficulty, but should not relate all questions to graphics and games. Well, I'm afraid I did. Um, that's the way it was. In fact, here's my uh, project. Um, this is actually like a hangman um, with the database, um, which was a great little game printed out on a plotter, as you can see here, and in fact uh, went on to get it published on the um, BBC Model B Computing magazine. Um, so I managed to get some money for my O-level project, which was great. As part of my O-level project, I also wrote um, The Impact of Home Computers, which is a uh, the view at the time of uh, what computers were all about with some surveys of other kids of what they thought about computers um, I've actually managed to list all the computers that were available at the time uh, we'd written a couple of games and they were covered there Telescope for the BBC that we'd written there's Gambit published by Acorn Soft there. Uh, KV, which is what we're going to talk about, in which May. is what we're going to talk about. So this was written in March '85 for this uh, document. Um, an art package we'd written for the um, BBC, and we'd actually sold to Firebird Software, but they never actually published it. So in fact, uh, Easy Art on the Amstrad was then uh, programmed later. Um, and it basically talks about all the different programming languages and uh, how everything works, a bit of history of computers, and an introduction which covers how the, the fact that in today's society many people actually feared computers would make people unemployed. But in fact, we saw this as an excellent opportunity and people shouldn't be scared of computers. In fact, they were very exciting. So, um, moving on from there, Andrew, would you like to talk more about KV? Okay, so um, I'll just, uh, talk to you a little bit about KV. Here's a project file for it, so uh, by Philip Oliver and Andrew Oliver. So uh, we were still at school in sixth form, and we were going to set out to make an arcade game. Uh, we were going to learn Assembler 6502 on the BBC Micro. This is the book we used, complete with the coffee stain. This is a very well flicked through book, I can tell you. Um, and then when we came to uh, work out the game, we thought let's. Uh, have a funny interesting spin on a uh, Space Invaders and a game called Gallagher which actually on the BBC was called Zalaga because on the BBC they always copied arcade games which uh, we loved that game and we thought let's uh, have a caveman or a few cavemen throwing spears they're on a log at the bottom between cliffs and the pterodactyls are swarming around and you've got to avoid them dropping rocks on you to try and kill you and actually there's an extra element of danger because when you spear a pterodactyl he's in a fall and you've got to make sure he doesn't get knocked off the log so that was the theory for the game we um, also loved cartoons and in fact there was a Captain Caveman cartoon on a TV at the time and they always nicknamed him KV yes but uh, we weren't really copying it but we were very aware of the name at the time so um, we hand wrote everything out um, just because it's what the kind of thing that they teach you to do at school is just write everything but it was before you really actually had computers and printers well you kind of did but you weren't using them in that way um, here's us trying to work out the graphics for the pterodactyls and you worked out graphics by literally filling in the graph paper and working out the hex codes um, the, the binary for 
for typing it in and working out what the colours were. Flow charts, because we were told at school all programmes need flow charts, so there was a lot of flow chart stuff going flow on. Flow charts are actually useful too. Yeah, actually, even nowadays you sort of um, you sort of diagram up things, um, but you take a little bit of the flow chart and then work it out into the assembler. Uh, so if anyone recognises uh, that assembler from things like Terminator when it pops up on the screen, I always find that funny to see that uh, Terminator's programmed in 6502. Um, Working out KV Sprite, working around, oh, there's just, just loads of it. Uh, in fact, this is kind of the whole game is here in bits and pieces. Well, the thing is, we um, used to write out an awful lot of stuff because we only had one computer. So while one was actually typing some code in, the other one could, could uh, be writing and working out the next section. So anyway, we were able to obviously publish KV. Um, here's the the box. We think it went out in about March '85. So there's a few things on the net that uh, seem to say otherwise. But looking at the dates, because we've got dates on these things, we think about March '85. Um, there's a photograph of us uh, very proudly showing off some of the games. This must have been photographed uh, slightly afterwards, but it shows about a year later, I would say. Yeah, because we've got a Robin Hood, which was written afterwards. Uh, so the money we got from this, which was uh, two hundred and fifty pounds, I remember we got for KV. Um, we bought ourselves an Amstrad. And the first thing we did when we got the Amstrad, because it's brand new... Which version of the Amstrad? Uh, it was actually the 6128, I think. I think, no, we got the 664 first and then upgraded to a 6128 to get a second machine. Oh, OK. Um, so the first thing we worked out is we didn't want to do our graphics via graph paper, so we wanted to write a little bit of an art package so that we could do the graphics. And in fact, we spent so long doing the art package to make our graphics easier and quicker to produce that we actually decided to sell the... Um, art package itself. So there it is uh, from Interceptor Software. And the other thing that we found is that we first started programming was a way to move the graphics around the screen quickly. So we uh, wanted to make our sprites uh, really, really fast, really optimized, and very variable with all the clipping and things that were needed. And again, uh, we spent so much time working out how to animate the sprites and having a little package for animating that we. Uh, decided to sell that as well. So actually it was like the first piece of middleware, I guess, because it was a package that allowed you to write games uh, very quickly and easily. And in fact, we did find quite a few games that were written using Panda Sprites. Uh, so no, no royalties, no thoughts of middleware or anything in there, but we're quite proud that we uh, did it early on. And clearly it was um, methods like this which enabled us to write a lot of games very quickly. Okay, so let's have a look at KV, the game itself. So, uh, published early 86, written in 85. Uh, Andrew, let's get started. Okay, KV, so where's my little KV? Here he is on his log. Uh, limited on the colors there, but hey. Uh, so the idea is that you throw spears up at the pterodactyls and it was our sort of prehistoric spin on Space Invaders and Gallagher. Well, that was a bit rubbish, Andrew. Yeah, well, I've got to get into it. It's been a few years um, <laughs> since playing whatever... Oh, good goodness knows. Well, how many years ago is that? 80... If it was written in 85... 29... No, 30. 30 years ago. Because we're 2015 now. My Lord, we're old. Yeah. Mm, okay. Well, we were young at the time of writing it because this was actually written in our lower sixth when we were... 15, 16? 16. 16. 16. 15. Okay, and it was our first sort of game that uh, was written in assembler. Machine code, as it sometimes called it. Um, 6502. Okay. You had a limited memory Whoa. of... Um, the, the BBC was uh, 32K, um, but only eight of that was actually available to you um, for last programming yes, because the screen RAM took so much because it was a pixel-mapped screen. Um, 16 colours in this resolution. Um, and not a bad resolution either for computers at the time. One interesting thing was that a friend a few years later de decompiled our game to actually have a look at how we wrote it um, and actually pointed out that we'd accidentally uh, mismanaged our memory and left a whole load of source code in the um, memory, in the save and as a result it only used a fraction of the available memory for this game, something like 2k out of an available 8k. Um, well, it just shows it was written even more efficient than we thought. <laughs> Okay, just taking them out, so um, just keep throwing the spears up, avoiding the 
dead pterodactyls that are, are coming back down. You've got to avoid your own spears, which is a bit of a game as well. There uh, was an intro. It did make for good gameplay, actually. It's actually quite fun playing this. Another interesting uh, ne- nerdy thing about programming it was that the screen RAM was actually laid out on BBC in memory in a really weird um, method. So when we were plotting the sprites, we calculated each pixel and how to plot it um, using maths um, to work out what byte in memory to sort of write to. Um, the game was running relatively slowly when we first programmed it, even though it was 100% machine code. Uh, we then came up with this crazy idea of pre-calculating the maths and doing what is known as a lookup table. So every horizontal line, we'd actually pre-calculated where it would be in memory. And we decided to change our sprite routine oh, and God. see if this uh, improved the speed. And the speed was a tenfold increase. It was absolutely incredible how fast it moved after that. And in fact, we ended up going and putting code in to then slow the game down to make it actually playable. Yeah, and it is pretty playable. It's got quite a lot of stuff going on. It's, it's quite fun. It's quite a challenge. I tell you that much. Trying to avoid all the things dropping in, even your own spheres. Interesting little thing is like it's got a double score system going. It's got this sort of bonus there. So, which is just counting down all the time. So the longer I take to kill these guys, the less score I get at the end, where it sort of adds any leftover score. Oh, oh my God, that was close. Uh, leftover, okay, I shouldn't talk while doing that. That's killed me. Um, I actually kind of feel like having another game, but I shan't bore you with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty good, Andrew. I think you definitely showed up uh, what KV was. And uh, yeah, we, we left for breaking KV. It was, a, it was a good first arcade game for us. Okay, so uh, that's KV. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learning a little bit more about KV and what got us into um, writing video games when we were still at school. Yeah, and if you like this, do check out the other videos we've made of some of our early games. And uh, yeah, if people keep liking them, watching them, sharing them, we'll create some more. Okay, thanks and goodbye. Goodbye.